Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be using a random wheel to determine the stipulation of the draft pick. For each one, by the way, not an overall thing. We're going to be using an app called Spin the Wheel to do so. So I got my phone right here all ready to go. But before we get to that random, we need to tell you that this video is brought to you by Raid Shot. No, I'm just kidding. But we do need to randomize a team. So without further ado, hopefully we get a team that we haven't used because I didn't realize that I got the Golden Knights basically back to back. So hopefully we get a new team here. I did see some comments saying, oh, you never use my team. And yeah, I'm sorry. I want to, but I can't pick teams. All right. Randomness has no memory. It has no favorites. And today we are going to be getting the New York Islanders. Okay. Okay, I feel like we barely use them, so I'm down. Don't even think about touching my lines, Jabroni. We're gonna get draft pick number 12. You heard it here first. Let's find out. Just show it to me. I already know that we're number 12. It's obvious. Okay. Well, I'll take that, though. Barkov went right before us. Vazzy is gone. Matthews went first. Matthews, Makara, and then McDavid. That's interesting. All right, here we go. I'm going to uh, spin the wheel. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. For our first pick, it is gonna be a... Could it be original six team? Nope, it's a player who plays for a non-Canadian team. Okay, so that is a pretty generic one. I'm down. So basically we can take any of the top five because we have Chicago, Tampa, Nashville, Pittsburgh, and Tampa. Could also take the bread man again. Could take Pasta who's on a very good contract. He's 26, got the medium elite potential. I know it would make my friend happy. <laughs> I feel like when I take defensemen, it just normally doesn't work out in my favor, but maybe I will go with Victor Hedman. Give it another shot here. You know what? Yeah, I am gonna do it. We're gonna try drafting a defenseman first. All right, pick number two. What stipulation will we get this time? I think I'm gonna try to lower the drafts, or the, the draft, the, what's it called? The amount of time it takes to spin. I don't know if that's gonna be picked up on the mic or not, but it has a pretty cool sound when it's done. Shorter than 5'9", eh? There's genuinely no point at looking at goalies right now. That was not a great one to get for the second pick. I cannot fib. Ah, uh, so close with Marcheseau. Tori Krug as well. Where's all my short kings? There we go. Matt Zuccarello, 5'8". What an icon. He's got two abilities. 86 overall. He's gonna be our first forward. Uh-oh. Okay, I decreased the spin time, so it shouldn't take as long, and we get a left-handed player. Again, that is quite generic. Victor Hedman is left, so I don't want to take another defenseman right now, and Zuccarello is also left, so that doesn't really help. What if they glove left? Huh. I don't know if I can count that. Let's take Bergeron. You guys remember that? Good times. Shea Theodore. 87 overall at only 5.2. He shoots left. I mean, we could have two left-handed defense. I mean, he's lefty slash righty, so he could be over there to set up for one T's and whatnot. You know how it is. All right, Shay, let's do it. And for our next pick, we will have to pick someone who is left-handed again. Great. I'm going to try specifically looking for a centerman because I feel like that is our best bet right now. Chandler, please. Yes. What a legend. I really want to, but Bo Horvat does have three abilities, which can help our line chemistry and maybe make us a little bit better. Oh, why'd you have to make it difficult? I could even take Nick Backstrom, who has four abilities, but 9.2? Mm-mm. All right, Bo, fine. I like this one. This is a fun challenge. Next, we are going to have to select someone who plays for a Canadian team. I'm going to try to take a goalie because they are dwindling. Jack Campbell plays for Edmonton, so we could take him. In fact, I feel like he is probably going to be our best bet. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Campbell's chicken noodle soup it is. And for the next pick, we will choose someone who is making less than two milli. Probably just going to take the first person I come across. Barbashev, so close. I don't know if I've ever drafted this guy. I probably have like recently, probably last video, honestly, but I'm going to take him anyway. 84 overall, 24 and 1.5. Uh, yes, please. We need a right winger. Boom. And we need it soon. So hopefully we get one. Plays in the East. All right. Again, we are landing on a pretty generic one here, which is great for us. Perron plays for Detroit now. Taylor Hall plays for Boston now, so they both count. But I think I'm going to take Brian Russ because we do need a right winger. As you can see, we currently have zero. So he is a prime pickup from the Pity Pens. 5.1. Not too bad. Could be worse. He's actually the lowest. No, he's not. Not even close. Well, kind of close. The only person making less than him on this front page right here is Perron. So, Rust, 
Welcome to the squad. For pick number eight, we will have to select a player that is... Oh, never mind, there's no stipulation. I can take whoever the heck I want. I don't understand how Eric Carlson has no abilities or anything. That guy is back. He's so good. I don't like the pressure of this any player pick because I don't know who to take, you know? It just adds that much more pressure onto me because there's no stipulation. And I could screw this up royally. I'm debating between Burns and Carlson right now, honestly, because I do want a right-handed defenseman and they both shoot right. Even though I think it's probably gonna pair the other two together anyway, Hedman and Theodore. Well, maybe it won't, I don't know, but I could always do that. Ah, this is tough. They're both offensive defensemen, but Brent Burns has the much higher physical category. He's also making about half the salary. All right, that convinced me. Let's go, Brent. Here we go again. What will it be this time? It is left-handed. Oh, we were close to the shorter than 5'9". That probably would have been rough. Well, maybe not. I'm gonna take Verhege because he's a center slash left wing. Shoots left. Mm-hmm. And we need centers because we only got one at the moment. Yeah, this is the halfway point of the draft, and for that pick, we need to pick someone older than 34. Easy peasy. We only have one right winger. Timothy Jimothy Oshi is also a right winger, and he's got five abilities. Look at this guy. Fully loaded. Let's go, TJ. Pick number 11, and this time we have to take a player that is non-North American born. I could take David Krejci, finally. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna pass up on David for now and take Barabanov. 83 overall, 2.5. I know it doesn't make any sense because he's literally making 1.5 more and is one overall worse, but I don't know. I'm doing it anyway. My main purpose for that pick was to try and keep the average age of our team down, but I actually don't think I've taken that many players that are super old. Yeah, not really. So, Krejci wouldn't have heard it that much. All right, what stipulation will we get this time? It is gonna be a left-handed player. I was actually gonna take him this time, but he is right-handed, so no can do. I can, however, take Marcus Foligno, also realizing haven't taken a backup goalie yet. So that's a little bit of a cause for concern, but we'll get there, we'll get there soon. And now we must take someone who is or has played for multiple teams. Just to clarify, by the way, I mean multiple NHL teams. So unfortunately, Krejci does not qualify as he's only played for Boston in the NHL. Oh, there's actually some decent goalies left. I know James Reimer for sure has played on multiple teams. I want to take Craig Anderson though, because this guy's a beauty. He's 41 years young and he is having a career year. I know that has no effect on how he's going to simulate, but welcome to the team, Craig. We also only have three defensemen. I don't know how, I have been putting defensemen and goalies off so much. Hopefully with this spin, I will be able to take a defenseman, North American born. Okay, so yeah, that's a pretty generic one. And with this selection, I will be taking physical defensive defenseman, Joel Edmondson. Pick number 15, what do we have here? Played for multiple teams again. Okay, so there should be a fair amount of players. Frederick Goudreau has played for the Predators and the Wild. 82 overall. He's gonna be our third line center. Well, maybe. Well, let's see what they do with the lines. I have no idea. So pretty much we need one more forward line and our final defensive pair and we're good to go. So this stipulation is going to be a right-handed player. I might go for a defenseman here. It's gotta be Luke Shen. It literally has to be. Coming down to the wire here, not too many picks left and we get a player who plays in the West. I feel like we'll actually be able to afford it. So just for fun, I'm gonna take Jamie Benn. I don't know if I've ever drafted him. So we have give or take about three million dollars per player left and we need to take someone who plays for an original six squad craig plays for the bruins 3.1 a little bit exceeding the allotted salary per player remaining but it's okay we'll make it work our penultimate pick will have a stipulation of younger than 24 that could be tough i feel like we've actually landed on most of the options which is cool i expected to get a lot of the same ones in a row but nope come on wade couldn't have been a year younger. We got Cates, left winger, Noah Cates. Maybe. Yeah, I feel like he's gonna be our best bet. We've had a bunch of 24 year olds, but we gotta go with the 23 year old in Cates. All right, that is our selection, I suppose. One of our wingers is gonna have to play center, which is not really an issue. Definitely passed him while I was talking because he was a 78 overall. I'm almost sure of it. Where is this man? Was he not? Was he 79 overall? Did he even exist? Did I just make him up? Oh, wait. There we go. Kate. 
He's trying to hide from me. Hey, you don't want to play for the team. I see how it is. And our last pick for this draft will be a North American born player. We need a defenseman and we got 5 million to boot. So theoretically, I should be drafting a right-handed defenseman, but I think I'm gonna stick Brent Burns on the second pair and just have Theodore and Hedman play together. He'll bring us very close to the cap limit, almost perfectly. So Ben Chirot will indeed be the final selection of the draft. He's also drafted by the Atlanta Thrashers. That's elite. The fantasy draft is now complete. Same screen that you get when you complete 25 years of franchise mode. Oscar Dansk, I forgot about that guy. Whatever happened to him? And somehow we got Pedersen at 825. Just kidding, I know, it's not, yeah. They want Oshi on the first line, which does give it a plus five, but I'm gonna move him down so that this line gets a plus one and this line still gets a plus five. It's not as strong of a plus five, but hey, plus five is plus five. I'm not a big fan of Jamie Benn at the age of 33 taking Hagel spot, so I'm gonna move him up, which actually gets rid of the plus one. But actually, what if I do this? Nope, that brings it even worse. So now we're gonna keep it the way it is. Ben's actually got 77 in the dot, so that is not too shabby. He's actually got better face-offs than our second line centerman. We really don't have a stud on forward, eh? Like it's 86 overall is our best player. We got two of those at least, but I don't know if our team's gonna be any good. Oh well, let's not judge a book by its cover just yet. Maybe we will do all right. Defensively, I want to do Really? So they get a zero. I guess handedness does really matter or something weird's going on there, but I'm gonna run with these defensive lines. Shen is right-handed, so there you go. Yeah, we'll try this out. In net, we have Jack Campbell backed up by Craig. I don't know what to say for this team. I think we're gonna get 30 wins, honestly. Some of those early stipulations really killed us. So I'll say Victor Hedman gets the most points with 60. I don't think we're gonna do too good, but maybe, maybe we will. We will just be a gritty team that somehow, some way gets into the playoffs. Perhaps. Here we go, the season is underway. Will the Islanders somehow prevail with this roster or will we be deleted by the entire league? We're off to a pretty solid start, but I know now not to accept that as the rest of the season. Because before you know it, the team will be on a 22 game losing streak. Oh yeah, there we go. See, that's more like it. This is what I was expecting. The Metro does seem kind of poop though, so maybe we stand a chance? Yeah, we're third in the Metro right now, only two points back on second. Actually, our record is turning out to be better than I expected. Quite a few losses in a row there. Marcel, Got canned from the Red Wings. Sorry about your luck, pal. We have 30 wins going into the trade deadline. I will enter it just to see who's available, but not gonna make any trades. Patches is up. Oh, oh yeah, I marked us as a seller. Whoopsies. But we got Patches here. Vitek Vanacek, William Carlson, Petrie. Okay, there's some pretty decent players available, but I'm not interested. See you later. Nice. Two, three wins right after the trade deadline. Oh my word. What is going on? Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> the post-trade deadline collapse. There you go. Now you're figuring it out. Fourth in the division. <laughs> oh, this game, man. We did not make it in, but honestly, we were pretty close. We barely didn't make it, you know? Oh, Bo Horvat, let's go. What a lad. We finished fourth in the division with 86 points, so these teams ended up really pulling away. A record of 38, 34, and 10. We finished 10th in the Eastern Conference, so definitely not a great season. And the Pity Pens take home the President's Trophy. Let's see what their roster looks like here. They got Ovechkin playing with Kempe and Skinner. Duclair, Newhook, Van Riemsdyk, Yarncrook, Rozovic, Glass. Okay, Demko and Net. that explains it all. Moritz on defense, and they have Pionk. He was actually a plus 18, so you know what? We didn't do that bad. Zuccarello had 62, and we also see 62 from Victor Hedman, 50 from Timothy Jimothy. Rust only put up 48. Hagel put up 46, that's not bad. Truthfully, our goalies didn't do that bad either. We got 29 wins from Jackery, who had four shutouts, and a 909. Craig, stud. I mean, he went 9, 12, and three, but it was not his fault, clearly. He had a 917, 258, and two shutouts. Hellebuck led the league with 45 dubs. He had a 915 save percentage and a 246. Gibson had 44 wins and a 918, so he played phenomenal. McCarr led defenseman. He had 74 points. We got a nice amount of points out of Adam. Roman Yossi put up 67, and then we got Taves and Riley both putting up 65. One of those seasons where nobody broke the 100-point mark, but very close was Patrick Kane. 98, two off. He also had 49 and 49, an even split. Love to see that. 
Ovi only had 41 goals, which is weird, but 96 points total. 55 from Matthews, who puts up 95 points. There's actually only three players to break the 90 mark. I feel like sometimes you see it, we're all the way down to here, it's 90. And Robert Thomas, 83, let's go, lad. Time to find out which squad is taking home the ultimate prize. And then we can look at the awards, look at the Stanley Cup winning roster, and we will be all done here. I feel like I want to rematch with this draft challenge. And again, Picking defenseman first did not work out for me, so I think I'm going to try to veto that in upcoming drafts. The Jets are Stanley Cup champions. They finished third in the league, and they have Panarin, Zabinijad, and Okpozo. Nice. Their second line, okay. They have Mason McTavish as well. Pavel and Nett with Jesper backing him up. Gerard and Goligoski. Doughty, Shea, Bean Strawman. They have a very strong defensive core, but still, I don't think this is a Stanley Cup winning team. What do I know, though? We already know the team awards for the most part anyway, I guess. Oh, there you go. Prince of Wales was the pity pen. So these two teams cleaned up. Yeah, we already knew that one. Normally, shared, but not this time. Ovi gets the heart. Norris goes to Fox. And the Lady Bing will be headed to Kane. Shane Wright takes home the Calder. Gerard gets the Con Smythe. Oh, attaboy. Fezna goes to Gibson. And the Jennings goes to Thatcher Demko. Oh, for some reason, I thought they were on the same team. I just saw... The black and yellow, but no, it's Boston and Pity. All right, let's just go through the rest of the trophies here. There you have it. And on that note, it's playoff tree time. That's how it all went down. The Pittsburgh Penguins and the Winnipeg Jets faced off in the final. It was a 4-2 performance from the Jets. And yeah, that was a fun draft. I'm not going to lie. I had a lot of fun with that one, even though we sucked. Some of the drafts are a chore, but this one, definitely not. Good time. Well, on that note, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you want to see me take on the wheel again in a rematch, go ahead and let me know. If you have other ideas to add to the wheel, also let me know. And on that note, I appreciate you. And on top of that, I will see you soon.